the only five exercises you need for rock hard abs after 40. Listen, I get it. We have a whole generation of people who are embracing the dad bod, the dad bod. What is that all about? We're making it okay. We're normalizing having extra weight around your waist. Now, consider this. You won't lose weight just by doing these exercises. As I've always said, abs start in the kitchen. But today we're going to talk about the exercises that will actually add muscle to your midsection so that you can see that six pack or wait, maybe even an eight pack or a 12 pack. Yes, it's all possible. And you can still do this after your 40th birthday. Here's another reason, sarcopenia. I've talked about sarcopenia on my podcast and also in other videos. What is it? Well, it's simple. After around our 35th birthday, we start losing muscle mass. And that muscle mass is not just in your pecs and your biceps and your thighs. It's also throughout your midsection, which includes your abs, your obliques, your back muscles. And we're here today to talk about that. You're going to want to stick around until the very end because I'm going to also talk about breathing when it comes to doing these exercises. I know I used to goof on people about this back in the 80s during the aerobic era when the teachers would yell out, breathe, as if you would forget to breathe. But breathing is very important here. Also, the minimum and maximum you should do per week to get the perfect rock hard abs. I want to start by saying these five exercises are nowhere near the only exercises you should be doing for your abs. But this is something you can start with at home. It takes minimal equipment and you can do it right away. Eventually, I'll do more videos on more advanced abdominal exercises. But in those cases, you're going to need equipment and perhaps even have to go to the gym. Number one, the basic sit up. All you need for this is a floor. You don't even need the floor. You just need the ground and you can do these. Now, some people can do these without latching their feet under something, but if you have to latch your feet, you'll see in the video that I'm putting it under some dumbbells, but if you have a couch or anything where you can slip your feet under, that'll be just perfect. Also, I'm gonna show this exercise with three different positions for your hands. One with your hands crossing your chest, two with your hands behind your head, and number three, adding weight by putting weight across your chest. Now, what's the difference? I tell everyone you want to start with your hands crisscross across your chest. And the reason for that is it makes it easier and you're not going to jerk on the way up. It's okay to put your hands behind your head. But here's the issue. If you have a neck problem or if you don't want to develop a neck problem, you have to be really careful not to jerk your head every time you come up. You want to just have your hands resting behind your head and lifting with your stomach muscles. And if you get to the point where you're doing too many repetitions and you still don't want to put your hands behind your head, it's easy just to grab a dumbbell or any kind of plate weight and put it across your chest. You will be surprised at what five pounds will do in that situation. So here's the deal when it comes to doing a basic sit-up. Once your shoulder blades are clear of the ground, you've now contracted your rectus abdominis, that's that six pack in the front of your stomach, as much as you can possibly flex it. You're actually doing the exercise. If you actually just held yourself in that position, you would be working the entire rectus abdominis as much as it can be worked. So if we're working the entire rectus abdominis, when we just lift our shoulder blades off the ground, why should we do more than that? Why should we come all the way up? Well, the best reason is because you're going to also work the hip flexors. Why would we want to work other muscles in that area? It's simple because we don't just do things in one static way. Our bodies are very complex. Muscles work in concert with other muscles in the area. In this case, it's going to work with a lot of the hip flexor muscles. The iliacus, the psoas muscle, the pectineus, the rectus femoris, and the sartorius. When those muscles build with the rectus abdominis, not only are you giving yourself a better chance to stay strong for the future, but you're giving yourself that symmetry that very few people have. You ever see guys or women who are in really good shape and they have really great abs? It's not just about having that three set of bumps right in the front, the six pack. It's also, they have that nice V that goes right down into their hips. It's all symmetry, folks, and you want to work all of it. So that's why we're going to come all the way up when we do a basic sit-up. Number two, doing sit-ups from an exercise ball. Why would anyone want to do this? 
Well, there's a couple of great reasons. Number one, some people have lower back problems, and when they do them on the ball, the ball will support their lower back. And then there's another reason. You have to balance. Even if you have great balance, your brain is constantly telling muscles, hey, stay on top of this ball. And just like doing sit-ups on the floor, you can do them with your hands across your chest. You can do it with your hands behind your head. Again, you don't want to jerk your neck. That's an important thing. And if you want to add more weights eventually, you can put a weight across your chest and do it that way. A note here, when you put your hands behind your head, you have to balance even more. So that's a great way to do these. Just keep that in mind. Number three, flat leg lifts. Just like when we talked about getting your scapula off the ground with the sit-ups, it's the same thing when we go the other way around. Once you're six inches off the ground with your feet, that rectus abdominis is as flexed as it's gonna be. Now here's the deal. Before you lift your legs even one inch off the ground, make sure that your lower back is firmly pressed into the floor. You don't wanna have that arc in your lower back. That's how people get hurt. Once you've maintained that one half a foot height, you can literally just stay there static and you're doing the exercise, but people get bored. That's why trainers like myself would always have them do the Y kickouts and come in. Again, you're working the sartorius muscle, you're working the iliopsoas muscles, you're working the iliacus, all of those muscles in the hip area, and that will help out. I would also have people do the leg flutters, the leg kicks. That seems to get you there quicker. So you can do those just to beat the boredom. Doesn't matter how you do them, you can do some flutters with some Ys, play around with it, it's up to you. You may be sitting there going, wait a minute, Vinny, I'm not in that kind of shape. I can't do that. I'm going to kill myself. Well, in that case, you can bend your knees and start from a bent knee position and then just bring your legs straight up. Once you've achieved that, start moving your legs out more and more. You'll be shocked that within weeks, you'll be able to do them with your legs completely out flat. Number four, planks. We've all seen these. People were doing plank challenges and everything else about 10 years ago. Doing planks is a great way to work your entire core. You're not just working the rectus abdominis. You're also working all of those hip flexors we talked about before. But wait, there's more. You're also working a bunch of back muscles in your lower back, in your middle back, and in your upper back. You may notice in my demonstration of this, my butt is slightly up. There's a good reason for that. When you let your back sag, you're going to let your lumbar fall upon itself and you can cause a real problem. This is all part of your core. You want to strengthen your back, not injure it. Number five, the obliques. Those are the muscles that run from your rib cage down into your hips. If you look at all the statues of Greek gods back in the day, they always had these well-defined obliques, and you can have them too. You just have to work at it. And here's what you're going to do. We're going to do side planks. You can hold these static if you'd like, but when you get a little more advanced, you can actually dip down into it, let your hip hit the floor, and then bring it back up to level. There's a second way you can do this. If you happen to have a dumbbell handy, you can also do the side crunch obliques. That's when you're gonna hold the weight in only one hand, not both, and go to the side. You don't wanna just go to one side, you want a pendulum all the way over, back and forth. Keep this in mind. When the weight is in your right hand, you're actually working the left oblique, and vice versa. Now for some bonus content. First, let's talk about breathing. Breathing is actually important when you're doing these exercises. Even though they're anaerobic, you want to breathe in and out. You're going to be able to flex the muscle a lot better if your diaphragm is in the up position. So you want to be exhaling whenever you're crunching in any sort of exercise. Always exhale, or as I like to say, blow when you go. Now for sets, reps, and frequency. Wow. We have five exercises here. Do you have to do them all every time? The answer is no. If you are going to do all five every time, you're going to do fewer sets. In other words, you can actually do one set and just go through all five. So now you're going to ask how many reps. It depends on how much pressure you're putting on yourself. If I can answer that question, you can call me the greatest man on the planet because I don't know where you are in your whole fitness regimen. Here's the deal. You want to move nice and slowly. You want to work the muscle, and you want to get pretty close to failure each time. Now, let's say you want to do multiple sets. You can pick any two of these and do them in that workout. You can mix and match. Let's say you want to do the flat sit-ups along with the planks. Well, you can do two or three sets of flat sit-ups and then go on to planks and do a couple of minutes and do a few sets of those. 
The same thing with the ball. You could pick the ball and then do the leg ups. Just pick two each time. Frequency, at least twice a week, but not more than three times a week. And here's the kicker. Never do them two days in a row. Your body needs time to rest. You need to rest the muscle. That's when we actually build the muscle. So if you do them on Monday, you can't do them again until Wednesday, and then you can't do them again until Friday. But like I said, twice a week is more than enough. Of course, when it comes to static exercises like the plank and the side plank, it's not about reps because you're doing one rep. So it's about time. You may be gassed after 20 seconds. You might be gassed after 30. I've had clients go 10 minutes on one set. You can work up to that, but do what you can. Remember what that time is and try to beat that time each time. And you could do more than one set. So let's say you make it for a whole minute, rest for a minute or two, and do another one minute and so on. There's an old saying that inside of every fat man, there's a skinny man trying to get out. People can actually build muscle underneath their fat. We have two fats that we're going to talk about here, visceral fat versus subcutaneous fat. The difference is visceral fat is the fat that you can't see. It's surrounding your organs. It's protecting your insides. The subcutaneous fat is the fat that's between your muscle layer and your skin. And that's the fat that's hiding your obliques. It's hiding your rectus abdominis. It's hiding your abs. Never think of ab exercises as a way of spot losing weight. You can't do it. It's never been done in history. It never will be done in history. Well, actually, if someone liposucked it out, that's the only way, but that's a major surgery, and I do not recommend it. You want to lose it the right way, so you have to get your diet right. You want to go low in carbohydrates. It's the only way to get rid of that fat. We just talked about one section of our bodies, the abs. But when you look around, you might find you have other sections, like a chest, a back, arms, even legs. You might want to check out my other video, the only five exercises you need to stay strong over 40.